Okay, Gibbs free energy, equilibrium, and electrochemistry. They can all be related to spontaneity. And remember that a reaction is going to be considered spontaneous if it moves in that forward direction, meaning it creates more products. And it's considered non-spontaneous if it moves in the reverse direction or creates more reactants. So just a reminder for us, and we've done this already, that in order for it to be spontaneous, we're saying that delta G would have to be negative, your E values would be positive, and your K values would be greater than 1. And the opposite would be true for non-spontaneous reactions. And now we're going to be looking at these formulas. And we're going to be able to um, relate delta G to voltage. And we've got our equation given to us right here, where we have a constant as well, um, F, which is we've seen that before related with coulombs. But it's 96,500 joules per volt. And then we have another reaction that we, or equation that we can look at. Let me get this to move. And that's uh, delta G related to our K value. And this right here stands for natural log ln. And this, we're relating this to our gas constant of R. They might look um, intimidating to you, but they will be given to you. So they're a gift. They will be given. You don't have to uh, memorize them. You just have to know how to use them. So we will just go ahead and jump into some examples here. And notice I went ahead and I put the, the equations up at the top and so we can think about which ones we have to use for this. So in this first example, we're given some two half reactions. I look at this and it looks like they're both reduction halves. I'm gaining in both of those, gaining electrons. I can't have two where I'm gaining, so I've got to flip one. Well, I'm given my values here. Remember that we want to make it spontaneous. So um, the question is, what is the delta G for a standard voltaic cell? If it's a voltaic cell, we know that we want to make it spontaneous. It needs to actually work in the forward direction. So in order for that to happen, I have to switch one of these, and I'm going to flip the sign of my E value, so I know that it's going to be this top one, which is the negative one. When I flip it, this becomes a positive value, and that means that my aluminum goes to Al plus 3, plus 3 electrons. So I can go through and I can add this up, and I get a value equal to 2.016 volts. Um, I should also go through a balancing process on this, and I see that I've got three electrons and two electrons. So I'm going to multiply this times two, and this one times three. So in the process, I would have it be 2Al goes to 2Al plus three plus six electrons, and three copper ions plus six electrons goes to three coppers. I got these to be the same so that they would cancel out. That's going to end up being important for me with the um, equations that I plug things into. So all I did was a little bit of work so that I could now plug in and be able to solve for my delta G. So if you look at those top two equations, think about which one would be most useful with the information that we are given. And it would be this top one right here. So we know that our delta G equals negative N F E naught. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and plug in. It's going to be the same N that we talked about earlier. And uh, this is going to be 6 because of our 6 electrons. So we've got negative 6 times F. That's just a constant that we look up. And we see it right there at 96,500. And that's going to be joules per volts. And we multiply that times our voltage of 2.016 volts. So we get an answer of negative 1170000, and that's going to be in joules. Um, it would probably be more appropriate to go ahead and put this in kilojoules. So it's going to be one, negative 1170 kilojoules. Or we could also say kilojoules per mole. It's really the same thing.
Okay, we have just done the first one. Um, it makes sense to us that this is negative, meaning it's spontaneous, but we made it spontaneous because it's a voltaic cell, so that's why it's negative. Okay, example number two. Here we are given a reaction. We're, we see that it's a reversible reaction, and we're also given a K value. So you should be able to look at this and say, yep, I bet I'm going to use the second equation right here, the one that has the K in it. And we can just go ahead, let me rewrite it. Um, let's see where I want to do this. Let me do it right here. Delta G equals negative R times T times the natural log K. That's the equation that we're going to be using, and we're looking for our Gibbs free energy, or delta G, and we want to determine whether it's spontaneous or not. So I can just start plugging in some values that I know. There's a negative. Then we have our gas constant, which is 8.314, and that's given to us as uh, joules per mole Kelvin. It's a little bit different than the gas constant that we were given earlier because it's different units, so that's why it looks different. And then we're going to multiply that times the temperature. And somewhere on here, it doesn't tell us. It'd be better if it told us, but since it doesn't, we really have to assume that this is at 25 degrees Celsius. So it's at 25 degrees Celsius, meaning our temperature that we're going to throw in, we're not going to keep it in Celsius when we've got Kelvin here in our units. We have to change that to Kelvin, which is 298 Kelvin. And then we multiply that times the natural log of 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. And um, that just comes directly from our K value for our acid there. So once you have that information in, you just plug it into your calculator and you get a value of 27100 joules per mole. Again, we would prefer to see this as kilojoules. And so we're going to say it's 27.1 kilojoules per mole. I see a plus there. I don't see a negative sign. So if my delta G has a positive value, that means it is not spontaneous. It will not occur in the forward direction. Okay, last one. Here we're given a reaction, and we're asked again what the delta G of the reaction is. And in this case, it tells us at 25 degrees Celsius. And um, it's asking what is the K of the reaction at the same temperature. So a couple different things going on. The first thing, I see this, and I also have an entire reaction given to me. So I should be thinking big mama on this one. We, should, we can use that formula to be able to come up with our delta G for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and write all this stuff down. We would look this up in our table. So we're looking at our products, and you have to look at your number of moles. 1 times negative 237.129. That's for your water. Then you also have 1 sodium chloride. And we subtract our delta G, the summation of it, for our reactants. Again, you've got one, in this case, for your sodium hydroxide. And we've also got one hydrogen chloride. So when we get our answer here, it's going to be negative 79.884. And that's going to be in kilojoules per mole. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and plug that into another equation because we're going to ultimately be looking for our K value, which is that second equation. So that's what I'm going to be wanting to use. Delta G equals negative R times T times the natural log of K. So in this case, I'm looking for my K value, meaning I have to change this formula around. It becomes the natural log of K equals delta G divided by negative RT. So when I plug things in, let's see if I can fit it over here, we get negative 
884. Notice what I just did was I just changed that to joules. So that's joules per mole. I got rid of my kilojoules. And I'm going to divide that by my R, which is, uh, I'm going to have a negative R, so negative 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Now the reason I changed that top one, my delta G, is because I know that the constant, my R constant, has joules in it, not kilojoules. So I wanted those units to be able to cancel. And then the last thing I notice again is that this is 25 degrees Celsius. So this is going to be at 298 Kelvin. So getting out the calculators, we figure out that this equals 32.24. Um, that's for the natural log of K equals that. So then we end up getting that K equals 1.004 times 10 to the 14th. That's a really, really big number. Sounds like we're going to have a lot more products. If you have a big number, products are going to be favored. So therefore, yes, this is a spontaneous reaction. That's it.